based on what Bhargavi has presented, I will uh, present to you the implications of uh, this kind of treatment to what was a living river. Uh, in Indian culture, we never put down a sacred symbol. So you never, uh, for instance, make fun of Vrishabhavati and call her Vishabhavati, you know, uh, even in jest. But that is the unfortunate state of affairs uh, because people are also angry with this river as its flood waters are essentially toxic. Uh, and moreover, they flood neighborhoods which are densely populated and every year we peop you know, hear about people dying, uh, entire families getting washed off and so on. But if you generally take the state of rivers, uh, let it be Kaveri or any of the other rivers, what we have found is that there is a very high amount of distress around rivers. Uh, for instance, two years ago, the Krishna flooded. And while the Krishna flooded, the entire cabinet was in a baitak with uh, Mr. Narendra Modi, and he was going to, he was teaching them the art of statecraft in uh, some mata which he had, uh, you know, which they had uh, congregated in. For three or four years, all the ministers completely forgot that there are lakhs of people stranded and suffering because the Krishna had flooded. It's either floods or it's droughts. That's been the picture of many of Karnataka's rivers. Uh, rarely has it been uh, of late a picture of contentment and satisfaction that, uh, that you live next to a river or cultivate with river waters and so on. And if you are irrigated, there are other sorts of problems that we are coming up with. For instance, take the Tungabhadra, which is in the north of Karnataka. Uh, it drains fantastically fertile soils, but mining has devastated most of the watershed. And if you were to travel in the Bellari region, uh, let's say in the last two or three years, and if you had the experience of traveling there, say, 20 years ago, you can't believe what has happened to those watersheds. Uh, totally devastated. And it is no joke that the politics of the state has been determined by the levels of corruption that uh, what Bellari mining has created. So you can see an association between the state of our rivers and its watersheds and the quality of your, our politics as well. What we also find is that many of our rivers are heavily polluted, uh, particularly Kaveri is under serious threat because almost all its tributaries are heavily polluted in the Bangalore region. And if you travel south towards Mysore, which is the next major urban center, there are seven you know, fairly large urban areas that you come across before you uh, get to Mysore, which is a distance of about 150 kilometers. And this is really the drainage area of the Kaveri, uh, when it emerges from Kurg or Mysore and the Emavati, which also joins in. The proposals that the government is making is essentially to industrialize these areas. But this is being done in the same manner that we have industrialized in the last, say, 40, 50 years. The other form of proposal is to densely populate these areas in urban corridors. Uh, there is, for instance, a massive uh, uh, urban uh, uh, industrial corridor called the Bangalore Mysore Infrastructure Corridor Project, a totally controversial project. Uh, in fact, the first project, which was given under uh, what we call the build, own, operate, and transport uh, scheme, uh, when India liberalized, the person who got the project claimed that he was, uh, I mean, I'm saying person now, but the company which came in said it is an American consortium. Subsequently, we came to realize that it is, there's absolutely no American content to it. It was uh, promoted as such. Uh, there was no capital. That man had hoodwinked the governments, and not necessarily hoodwinked the government, hoodwinked the people of the state in collusion with the bureaucracy and the political setup. It doesn't matter which party it comes from. Today, that project has got 21,000 acres of land in Bangalore, Mysore region, which is really the region which was irrigated by the Kaveri. And two TMC of water has been allocated to the Bangalore, Mysore infrastructure corridor project, absolutely without any consideration to the existing town. Some towns are three, 400 years old. Bangalore has a continuous history of at least 1,000 years. Uh, Mysore, you know, uh, is growing. The population of Mysore exceeded 1 million uh, in this census. Uh, the total population, urban population in the Bangalore Mysore region now is about 1.5 crores. With this type of dense uh, density at the very source of the river or in the watershed of a river 
which drains for another five, six hundred kilometers and is basically the lifeline for Tamil Nadu. I think there's a lot to wonder about what kind of uh, impact this form of development will have on this river system. Of course, uh, every city has its ambitions and Bangalore's ambition is to uh, densify. Uh, between 2001 and 2011, the population has almost doubled. It was about uh, 50 lakhs in 2001. Uh, the built area of Bangalore, which is 2,000 square kilometers, has got a population exceeding 85 lakhs, 8.5 million. And if you take the agglomeration, it has crossed 1 crore or 10 million. The question is, how do you sustain this type of populations? Uh, and uh, the projection is that not the government's plans are really to intensify it. Uh, for instance, another plan of the government is to build seven satellite townships around the city and build a few ring roads to support and interconnect those satellite townships. The question really is, where will you get the water from? Current consumption patterns in Bangalore reveal that Kaveri waters, uh, which came to the city in 1970s, early 70s, until then we were only using the waters of Arkavati, which was a small tributary. And the Arkavati waters were tapped sometime in the 1920s at a place called uh, close to Magadi, uh, northwest of the city and uh, supplied uh, to a large area of built Bangalore uh, drinking water. But when the city grew, uh, particularly in the 70s, uh, it was felt that you know you had to tap the Kaveri waters. So we went and drew, drew water from you know, uh, 100 kilometers south, uh, and we had to pump it up, uh, because Bangalore is on an elevated uh, platform. Uh, so you had to pump it up over 500 meters. So that's a lot of energy that the city uh, invests in bringing water from a river so far away. And we have forgotten that the Arkavati which flowed could have been the so perennial source of, at least could have augmented a greater part of the city's drinking water needs. The city today consumes less than half of its drinking water needs from Kaveri, and the rest is really from the groundwater. Just to give you a sense of uh, the growth, this is the 1992, uh, this is the 1992 image. Uh, uh, the red part is the densely uh, built area of Bangalore, and this is uh, Bangalore just uh, three years ago, four, uh, four years ago. Uh, this is 2006, six years ago. And uh, I will tell you the scale. They're not a the scale, but I'll give you an indication of what that means. If you take this, this is Voskote tank. If you see Voskote tank today, it's almost totally devoid of water. This is Belendur. Okay. And you can see that the city had, uh, I mean, the la large part of this was still uh, uh, wetlands, actually wetlands. Uh, part of it was uh, paddies. And this was all, uh, has been uh, densified only in the last five to ten years. Uh, Belandur is, comp uh, this is what we call the IT corridor now, from here all the way around. This white field is here, and this is uh, the IT corridor. This is the road towards Osur. So most of these wetlands which sustained the drinking water needs, and the agricultural needs of those regions have been completely, uh, you know, polluted, heavily polluted actually. Uh, and Belandur goes to Vartur, and Vartur goes, and you know, the entire chain is contaminated. Uh, this goes to the Pinakani River actually, right? Uh, if you went to the northern part of Bangalore, you can, uh, for instance, see. Uh, uh, I think this is uh, Esargata, isn't it? Yeah, I think this is Esargata. Uh, it's really almost uh, urbanized today. So, and the city proposes to put up a huge township here. And that way, you know, seven townships will come around. Uh, 